It's Talk Funny, a podcast by Mark Bailey and other comics from all over. We came to Japan to learn that the word for cold in Japanese is samui. It is easier to learn the word for cold here because it is said every second of every day. The Talk Funny podcast from NagoyaRadio.com and Nagoya Comedy. Here's Mark Bailey. And welcome to another edition of Talk Funny. Guess who's here? Tim Lenane. Hello! Been a while, been a while. It's been a long time, actually. How's this year been for you? This uh, 2020, how's 2020 been for you? Oh, it's just been shaping up really well for the best year ever. Did it match your vision for 2020? Or yeah, you know. And see it, what it, I did there? I did an eye joke. <laughs> iPhone joke? Or something like that? You know, 2020. I, 2020, 2020 yeah, I got it. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You know, Should I get on my knee and explain like I do on stage? Please, could I you do please? the knee explain? I, d- I ducked that one. I'm ducking. I'm trying to duck that one. It's been the most bizarre year I can remember since yeah. I've been alive. It's just nuts. But I kind of enjoyed it. <laughs> well, I mean, when they talk about adventure, you know, you read about adventure, and that's, that's, it looks like they're having a great time. But the whole idea is that, you know, that's happening to somebody else. This is happening right. to me now. I don't need this adventure. I don't need to be without money. I don't need, I need jobs, you know. For people not in Japan might not know what we're talking about. Everybody knows, of course, we're talking about the COVID thing happened. Is that mainly what you're talking about? Yes, I am. I'm mainly talking about that. COVID and, um, you know, lo- job loss. Lost lost like three jobs recently. We canceled a few shows yeah. because the venues canceled on us. And, you know, nobody needs English. You know what I mean? I mean, when it really comes down to it, you know, that's the first thing to go. It's like your gym membership. It's like Eng- English lessons now. I don't need them. Bye. You Japanese see people learning English. Why start this year? I mean, why start now? <laughs> I mean, haven't they been doing it for like, you know, 12 years already? We're the chiropractors. English teachers are the chiropractor scammers of the world. Because if you've ever had a chiropractor, you know, my back hurts. You've been with them for 10 years. Your back still hurts. It's never healed. Yeah, what's up with that? I don't get it. It's just, it's a, I mean, I think we should Great be getting scam. holistic English. What do you think? You know, we're almost doing. We almost had hologram English. Basically, that's what Zoom is, right? It's like Princess Leah could just teach me English. She's not in Japan either. Yeah, yeah. It's like if I had known this would happen, I would have gone to New York and done my classes from there. Because you couldn't, you can't travel there. Yeah, you I'm, couldn't for a long time. Well, yeah, don't get me started about that. I thought, uh, if you look back on 2020, yeah. you know, if you look back on it, yeah. Yeah, no, that's your, that's your joke, so there you go. Yeah, if I look back on it, I, I can only see with my left eye. Yes, that'd be like 2010. This Isn't this really like the Mayan year, really? It's 2012, only it's 2020. Yeah, it's like that joke I told on stage before with the two Mayan guys, and one guy's you know, working on something, and a Mayan guy walks by and says, hey, you want to take a break and go get a drink? And he goes, well, I was working on this calendar, but I guess if I don't finish it, it won't be the end of the world. <laughs> But um, all I can say is, if you happen, uh, knock on wood, I haven't had detached retina, but I've, you know, even young people have those. And if you ever see like a flood of floaters, Ooh. you just, you know, those float those things, the little spots. You go to your eye doctor. I mean, oh, I'll do it tomorrow because I got to work today. No, listen. Would you rather have a job or would you rather see? Well, I'd rather see because then I can get another job. Yeah. <laughs> right? We had a show a few months back, and the day of the show. I was living basically Henry Hill and Goodfellas, if you watch the last scene right before he gets nabbed by the FBI. Spoiler alert, it's only a 20, 25, 25, 30-year-old movie. Uh, hey, I didn't. I was going to watch that tonight, Tim. If you would have one, watched Goodfellas, you just haven't watched movies. He got nabbed, okay? <laughs> That's the whole story. You ruined it for me. He became an informant, and this is his story, hence the movie. He's, you know, he's living the life of a mob guy, which is similar to being a comedian. Yeah, or you, you get up late. English teacher. You smell your armpits. If it's okay, you don't take a shower because you got a gig tonight. <laughs> I'm in entertainment. I'm, so many tangents. It reminds me of another joke where a guy, <laughs> so there's a guy, he works at a, a gambling resort and they also have horse racing and that's what they bet on. And his job is to clean up all the horse manure, right? And so he's cleaning up over and over and over and over again. And this talent scout comes in and he, and he hears him whistling and he goes, you're pretty good at whistling. Uh, why don't you quit this uh, crappy, literally crappy job? And what? I quit this job? I quit show business? <laughs> so, so all right. So the last scene of uh, one of the last scenes, that Henry Hill's this mob gopher, right? He's basically a gopher. He's got all these bosses. Yep. He said, you know, I had a million things to do. I, don't forget to stir the sauce. I have my brother watching the spaghetti sauce. Mm-hmm. I'm making special sauce that night. And then I tell the babysitter, don't talk on the phone when you're talking about the drug runs that we're doing. Because the FBI is listening on the phone. Right. right? I call from an outside line. And then I had to drop these guns off to Robert, you know, Jimmy, Robert De Niro. And then it turned out he didn't want them. I had a, a bunch of other things I had to do. I had to break up with my Gumar. I had to break up with my mistress, and she wasn't going to like that. And then I had four other things to do, and then meet some guys in Philadelphia. It was really going to be a busy day. This is not about my story, but he keeps uh, 
uh, tooting. He almost has an accident. So he stops in at the hospital, and they said, we're going we're gonna to keep you here, man. You are really in bad shape. Just come on. Let me, let me check you out, right? And so that's what happened to me. I had 100 things to do. We have a comedy night tonight. Mm-hmm. I have to get my rig. I have to bring the microphone, the mic- stuff. It's through. a lot of work. Yeah, I have to do all this stuff. I'm just going to pop in because I'm low on iMeds. Just pop in, get it. What could it take? 10, 20 minutes. Then I'm going to go get some lunch, and then I'm going to go meet some friends. Drop off the guns. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, see if Robert De Niro wants them or not. And uh, you know, I have some things to do. My schedule was full. I even had some online class stuff I had to do. I pop into the eye hospital. They said, we're just going to do a routine check here. So we can cover up your left eye. Tell me what you see on the chart. Can you read the top line? And I said, okay, go ahead and put the chart up. <laughs> no, it's up. They said, what do you see? I said, I just see this huge hole. Said, what do you, why do you have a hole in the wall? It's this hole. Really? And they said, well, look over here. You still see the hole? And I said, yeah. And they said, can you pick out any letters? I said, I can't see anything from this hole. It's baby, You know, we have on the microphone, we have these covers. If you put that in front of your eye, it's called a macular hole. Basically, between your retina and your pupil, you have, we'll talk about pupils later with online learning, but uh, this is a different kind of pupil. You have this gelatinous mass. You have this protective layer. When it breaks up, you see floaters. That's what that is, right? And the older you get, the more it breaks up. But sometimes it just floods your eye with liquid. And so that's what happened to me. I thought, well, I'll get it taken care of tomorrow. I I noticed it's kind of weird. I didn't see well out of my right eye. But then anyway, so they said, okay, well, we're going to do some tests now. We have to do blood tests on you. And then you have emergency surgery coming up at 4 p.m. today. No, I think you got the wrong guy. I'm (laughs) I'm just here to get this medicine. And then I I got a show tonight, you know, and the doctor came in and goes, no, listen, you can't leave. I said, I have a hundred things I have to do, even if I agree to have surgery tonight. Excuse me, you're under arrest, sir. I haven't even eaten lunch or breakfast. I didn't eat anything. It's basically like being under arrest. You have four or five nurses all over you. That was the fun part. <laughs> and But they're prodding you and poking you. That was also fun. And, and the, but no, they're giving you simultaneous blood tests yeah. and on each arm. And then you're taking pills and they're probing your eyes and stuff. And I said, so... I need at least 30 minutes to get to my office to get it. They said, if you don't have a toothbrush and all this other stuff, a lawyer will be appointed to you by, you know. Oh, (laughs) um, did I say lawyer? And It's like that. They said, you could buy a toothbrush for 800 yen. I said, you know what? (laughs) That's against my religion. That is just dumb. So I said, I really, I mean, I even left machines and stuff on here, and I need to turn them off if I'm gone for two days. I negotiated, and the doctor said, listen, I popped in at 10 a.m. It's 1 p.m., and they said, you're going to go in the surgery at 4, and we need to prep by 2.30. Right, right. So I said, I got to have some time. They gave me 30 minutes to run here. Luckily, we're in Kamimaizu, and I run to my office, and I eat some lunch, and I get some stuff taken care of. I have to phone a lot of people that are expecting me to show up, including the comedy guys and my wife. And my son, and I had something with my son that day, and, I, and my battery's low, right? Long, yeah, everything, I'm, I'm, everything's going everything. sideways, yeah. And I'm rambling, but it's like once they say your eye has about eight hours before it fills with fluid and you lose it. Whoa. And I kept saying, can we do this Monday? And they said, what is this show you have? And I said, I'm running this comedy show. And they said, okay, would you like to be funny or would you like to have two eyes? <laughs> I said, I'd like to do both. Is it, can I both? All of the above? And they said, okay. That's what I thought. But to do that, you're going to have to save your right eye. And so uh, emergency surgery. Yeah, man. How did the show go? Oh, Other than that, how was the show? The show. There was a show. It was, it was a show. It was this a, is a few months back. A few, a few months it, back. This is in September. It actually went out very, very well. Uh, we actually we did a new venue uh, called Midtown Barbecue. Yep. And uh, we've done Midtown before, but they actually moved their place from uh, one place in Fushimi down towards the Bees Motel there, moved towards the river. Right. And um, it's on three different floors, so it's a much bigger place, and it's still the same high-quality food. It's really good food there. Excellent. But um, they had this kind of literally a very big lounge on the third floor, and it's really a lovely venue. So, mm. um, yeah, it went off. We actually had a lot. Uh, we had one really great new stand-up guy. Good. Can't remember his name. Yeah, very memorable. Um, and uh, we we managed to put it together. It was, thank you very much for putting that together for us, Mark. Um, yeah, no problem. And, um, I intended to be there, actually. But. <laughs> well, you know, eyesight and comedy. I'd go with the eyesight, actually, because, you know, I'm not very funny anyway. You know, they're physically restraining you. They won't let you go. Yeah, I, I believe that. And they can tell, I want to get out of here. And they said... I need to get out for 30 minutes. And they said, okay, we, we can have a nurse go with you. They didn't trust me. Yeah, I believe that. And the truth is, you, you're not, you don't know how serious it is. Like, I, I want to do this like Monday. You'll lose your eyesight. Uh, no, not really. No, I, I'm good. I'm good. Right. You know? How bad could it be? 
Uh, you want to see? Yeah. You won't see anything you coming. You I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> Macular hole. So yeah, it was a good. It was a good night, and um, I, was, I had a great time. Um, I actually did okay. Um, apparently, my oyaji gags went over very well with the Japanese crowd. Good. Though we actually had some people filming again this time. Hmm. And the, the, the two Japanese ladies were there. They actually filmed me, and I'm going to actually ask them not to film anymore. Yeah, because should... it's just weird. Who knows where I'm at on the web somewhere now doing my jokes, you know, and they're like, it's probably funny because I'm just fat. Yeah, but, you know, we can't stop someone from posting, and that's, that's you know, posting right. socially has ramifications for us at yeah. our gardening jobs yeah. that we do full time. I mean, I, I know you listen to Tim and I, and you, you're like, well, those guys are so funny. You mean they're not full time comedians? <laughs> we actually have some side stuff that what? pays 98% of our... <laughs> Expenses, yeah, you know, it's I, yeah, I just I, I wish I could make comedy my my, my full time job. It's because you know, but social yeah. media, it's a, it's a dangerous thing. We've mentioned we're in an education business. It's just very dangerous to mix those two. Yeah, and considering the uh, the nature of the jokes that I tell, it would probably not go down very well with uh, the employers who I work with. Anything could be misconstrued, and uh, yeah, that really bothers me. I didn't realize they were doing that. What, what did she say? Why she's filming? Uh, no, I did not really ask, but I, I, they've been there before. They've, they show up pretty pretty regularly. They filmed us before. I didn't notice. Yeah, I think they have. They've gotten their cameras up before. Yeah, I didn't want to do the uh, the uh, this joke. That, you know, yeah, I, I didn't. I just I was going to do it that night. But you imitate a you do a very good imitation of a, a female part of the anatomy. Yes, if, that is yes, hilarious. Yes, and um, if you like humor. Yeah. <laughs> It's like <laughs> it's the one joke that actually kind of works. If you're a feminist, so. you probably don't like it. Probably but not. then what are you doing at a comedy show? That's Yeah, the misogyny was flying pretty fierce and harsh, harsh that night. You know what yeah. we learned at Toyohashi, though, is that if you're going to do, like for me, they said, well, we didn't enjoy the misogyny jokes. You should be better at it. All right, well, you're actually encouraging me to do We're more digging deeper into the male psyche here. So yeah. You should just say, I don't like misogyny jokes. But no, they have to say, but if it were funny, that would be okay. Now you're just insulting me well, I went because other- I'm very good at misogyny jokes. Yeah, I went the other round. I stopped with misogyny and went back to masturbation. So, yeah. Well, during the act, right? Yeah, during the act. Yeah, okay. Yes, okay. We should probably do something about that with, with people filming. I'm not, I'm not I think filming. we might mention it in the front of the show. It's like, please don't film because we have jobs. Yeah, you know I'm filming, but I never I never post it, and most with, of it's with worth- our filming. Yeah, it's it's in our control, but they're filming. Who knows? We wind up on TikTok or something else like that, and those are our jokes. Yeah, and we don't want to, you know, they don't, and they could be construed wrong, or you know, it might up wind up like in some alt right frog thing. You know, who knows? Well, that's why I don't even I've posted some of my act on YouTube private links mm-hmm. just to get gigs, but I don't. My stuff, I would never post any of you guys' stuff, any other person's stuff, but I don't even post my own stuff because of all the plagiarism on YouTube. Hmm. I'll give an example. Louis C.K., when he first came out of his, well, he came out of his, his cocoon, sabbatical. Yeah, his involuntary sabbatical. And he has a website, right, of course. And he said, here's my new set. It was $5 and I bought it. It's worth it. Okay. 90 minutes is excellent. And he's worth $5. You know, I want to support him. And it wasn't 12 minutes after he posted that that somebody posted that on YouTube. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, right. so no, who's going to buy that now? Right, no, it's free now, so why, why would I do that? Yep. And I saw a guy in New York that was probably in my audience, and he did one of my jokes. And I don't know this guy. Oh. And he heard it in New York, and it, it's my joke. It was the knife and the onions joke. Hmm. Yeah, good choice. Good one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, I remember when I wrote that, uh, <laughs> that I thought that was good. Yeah, it's a really good joke. Yeah, but here's the thing: using it. you know that song yesterday. McCartney and Lennon already did that song. Oh, no, that's that I movie. just wrote that. You know, no, that, I just I just I, did. Wait, listen to my brain. Yesterday, I just I I wrote it myself. I listened to it and I wrote down the words. Yeah, yeah, I wrote it. Uh, you know <laughs> what I heard and, on the radio. And I think I've got I've got a great little tune for that that goes with it. You know, so yesterday, oh my. Feeling seems so far away. What do you think? Well, mine was. Like I had that? an idea of. Da, na, 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 really? Na, 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 yesterday. God, I like that. Na, 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 hey, na, yesterday. <laughs> All right, we should close. <laughs> we got off the a subject. Stronger one? Yeah. yeah, this, yeah. The, so, stronger one. My, my eye. Uh, so, the eye story. The eye story was basically don't screw around with your eyes. Yeah. You think that you're important at the place that you teach? Your eye is more important. Guys think like that. It's just a cold. It's just COVID. Yeah, it's just COVID. Be fine. Yeah, no problem. I, Get over it. Uh, but you lose your eye, and then you can't work, and then it's it's really. But I did to have to close with this to just say I never saw that eye disease coming. <laughs> we'll be back next week with we'll talk funny.